more things you'll know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Hi, I'm Hannah Hansen. And I'm Caitlin Gillis, and we're from Mountain View High School. According to A Child Becomes a Reader, reading aloud to children has been called the single most important activity for building the knowledge required for success in reading. Reading aloud actively with children helps children learn new words, learn more about the world, learn about the written language, and see the connection between words that are written and words that are spoken. Hannah and I are here today to talk with you about children's literacy. In today's world, it is easy for parents to forget how important reading to and with their children can be. Although teachers provide instruction, parents continue to play a leading role in their child's reading development. Many parents routinely read books with children in early childhood. It is stated on kidshealth.org that the average grade parents stop reading to their child is first grade. However, the National Education Association states that reading to your child is critical and should continue through at least fifth grade. For many parents, the time after work and school is very hectic and busy, but we wanted to find a way to remind parents of how fun and important it is to read with children of all ages. For our Focus on the Children project, our primary goal is to promote an parent reading with their children. We wanted to plan an event that would reach out to the parents and children of our community to show them that reading is fun as well as helpful to their child's development. We will assess our impact on our community by measuring the number of participants who attend our event. Our target participants were the parents and children of Stafford County. We researched ideas on promoting reading with parental involvement and discovered the Read Across America Association's website. Their focus is Dr. Seuss's literature and spreading the benefits of reading to children. We chose two additional goals for our project. First, we felt that a Dr. Seuss event would be a great way to incorporate the ideas of being green, as seen in Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. Secondly, we wanted to bring the community together in a fun and friendly environment, remembering Dr. Seuss's motto, a person's a person, no matter how small. We believed our goals could best be met by hosting Dr. Seuss's birthday party at our local library. We contacted the supervisors from the children's department at our library and asked if they were interested in having us plan and sponsor the event. They loved the idea. After agreeing on an event date, we set up a meeting with the children's librarians to plan the event. With chapter members in attendance, we chose a carnival-like atmosphere with similarly themed games based on the Dr. Seuss books. We planned three general areas for activities, arts and crafts, reading, and games. We felt this type of layout would provide a logical way to occupy the available library space, allowing easy participant access and ability to move easily throughout the library. As time for Dr. Seuss's birthday party was getting closer, we began planning and narrowing down the types of activities we wanted to offer. Through studying PHA stages of cognitive development in our child development and parenting class, we felt that most children in attendance would be in the pre-operational stage of development, children ages 2 through 7 and focus on activities for students at that level. We believe children in the sensory and motor stage, ages 0 to 2, would be interacting primarily with their parent or caregiver. We also want to have activities for students in the concrete operation stage, ages 7 through 11. Because children and families would be welcome to drop in any time between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. to participate, we wanted to offer a variety of guided and do-it-yourself activities. The reading area hosted a room stocked with Dr. Seuss books and a chapter member dressed as the cat in the hat to read to children one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. The games area held pin the hat on the cat, hot potato with Dr. Seuss stuffed animal and Seussical themed music, pop on pop where the game leader read aloud the story pop on pop and children jumped on bubble wrap when they heard the words pop on pop. A go fish station based off of one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, and Dr. Seuss's bingo. The arts and craft area including face painted, a creative station where kids made their own hats, coloring pages, and a photo booth where kids and families could use props to take fun pictures. We had the pleasure of welcoming our local recycling group, the R Board, to our event, which helped meet our goal of promoting the green ideas expressed in the Lorax. The R Board provided plastic cups and soil and showed the families how easy it is to plant a tree in their own backyard. Families left with their own truffle tree ready to plant and start growing. We offered birthday cake and refreshments during the event. Our local giant and shoppers responded to our request for donations and generously donated one half sheet cake each. We also prepared around 150 cups with jello and Swedish fish to serve and rainbow goldfish. 
We also had several cases of water donated to us by Giant to ensure that none of our guests went thirsty. In order to promote the program, the Public Library helped us by having their graphics and design department design and print posters to distribute to all 18 elementary schools in our county. The Public Library also promoted our program on their activity guide, website, and by hanging posters in the library. Based on attendance from recent events, the library told us we should expect between 200 and 300 people to participate. As we wrapped up our planning, we hoped we would succeed and thought of Dr. Seuss who said, and you will succeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guaranteed. During the weeks before the program, we had several organizational meetings to prepare for the party. We teamed up with our National Art Honor Society to make most of the decorations and supplies that we needed. Our own chapter members were very helpful in this process by helping color and cut out a large quantity of little fish and cat in the hat hats we needed for games. Our advisors allowed us a $30 budget to purchase our materials. In addition, we painted the backdrop to the photo booth, made accessories for fun picture taking, created and printed the bingo cards, and gathered materials for arts and crafts. We even had one of our own chapter members sketch a life-size cat in the hat for our pin the hat on the cat activity. We had 15 FCCLA members volunteer to work at the event. Then, Vice President of Competitive Events, Olivia Hansen, also came to lend a hand. On February 23rd, the Mountain View chapter of SDCLA hosted Dr. Seuss's birthday at Porter Library in Stafford, Virginia. Our day was very busy. Rather than the expected 200 to 300 participants, the library attendance statistics show that 813 people attended our event. Children ranged from 0 to 12, with many more older children than we had expected. Birthday cake was served from 10 to 11 a.m. as we ran out due to the large number of participants. However, one of the librarians went out to a local supermarket to purchase over 300 cookies, helping to make the event a fun day for children who arrived after 11. FCCLA members painted faces, played games, served snacks, and had fun playing and reading with the kids. Based on feedback from families attending the program and Porter Library, we can confidently say that our program had a very positive impact on the children and community. As Dr. Seuss might say, today was good, today was fun, tomorrow is another one. Not only did our project meet our goals, it also met two purposes of SCCLA. By bringing families together for a fun day of reading and related activities, we helped strengthen the basic unit of society as a family. We also encouraged democracy through cooperative action in the home community by working together during the event. By using the FCCLA planning process of identifying a concern, setting a goal, forming a plan, and taking action on our plan, our FCCLA members worked as a team to create a fun-filled community event while promoting parent reading to and with their children. Our librarian partners were so happy with our planning, support, and overwhelming level of participation, our FCCLA club has been invited to form a partnership with Porter Library and continue these events in the future. The major changes we need to make for next year include preparing a more detailed volunteer schedule and planning for more refreshments. We really couldn't have predicted our shortage of refreshment due to past attendance statistics of library events and the tremendous response we got. We will definitely prepare for more participants in the future. Maybe we should even offer some green eggs and ham next year. We'll, we met with our friendly librarians after the event and they recommended separating the events by age group rather than the activity type to help manage the crowds, and minimize confusion. We are looking forward to continuing promoting parental involvement in reading across our community through our partnership with our public library. Through FCCLA, we created an ultimate leadership experience.